Hello and Namaste. This is Dr. Srinidhi Chidambram here, welcoming you to a special COVID care series presented by Apollo Hospitals. So, how have you all been? What with the Omicron mutant slowly creeping up along with an upswing in the COVID cases in many states in India, I hope you've all been following the COVID safety protocols without fail. COVID-19 needs our full focus again right now. It is tough to find a balance between taking precautions and then overthinking and worrying about the COVID-19 pandemic. But the right knowledge is indeed the best way to stay calm. And also, we now know so much more about COVID-19 than we ever did. The precautions, the management, and above all, we have the vaccines that have proven to have a good protective effect against the virus. Many nations, including India, have taken the step of supplementing the two doses of the vaccine with an additional third dose. But many of you may be wondering, what is this precautionary dose? Should I have it? Is it safe? Is it needed? Will it protect me from even the Omicron? Which is the vaccine I should take? Should the elders in my family take it? So many questions. So today, we are discussing this topic of boosting immunity against COVID-19, the role of a precautionary dose. And we are very honored to have with us Dr. M.S. Kanwar, Senior Consultant, Respiratory Medicine Specialist, Institutes of Critical Care, Respiratory and Sleep Medicine from the Indra Prastha Apollo Hospitals, New Delhi. Dr. Ms. Kanwar has had over 45 years of experience in handling critical care, as well as acute and chronic respiratory diseases. He's a pioneer in sleep medicine in India and started this specialty for the first time here in 1995 when he set up Asia's largest and state-of-the-art sleep lab at the Indraprastha Apollo Hospitals, New Delhi. He's currently leading the lung transplant program at the same hospital. He completed his MBBS and MD from the Government Medical College Amritsar and the DNB, and also a fellowship exam in cardiology from the University of Vienna, received pulmonary and critical care training, as well as sleep medicine training from the prestigious Mayo Clinic, Rochester, US, and also received his training in lung transplantation at the University Network Hospital, Toronto. Has presented various research related to sleep disorders, bronchoscopy, and played a key role in faculty presentations, and also 33 years of teaching experience pertaining to these specialities, trained scores of postgraduate DNB students in respiratory medicine and postdoctoral fellowship students as well, and has been a guide for thesis of DNB students also. And his latest achievement has been that he has written a textbook, which is the comprehensive review, a comprehensive textbook of COVID-19, which serves as a Bible for all in the latest updates about COVID-19. Welcome, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And we look forward to hearing from you what is the latest with COVID-19 in our country and in the world. And we will particularly talk about the precautionary dose. Over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nidhi. You have been so kind in such an elaborate um, <laughs> introduction. But anyway, the um, subject has been ravaging for the last uh, almost two years now. And uh, the way the virus has been changing shape has been a challenge for the humanity, for the scientists all over the globe. Um, it's, uh, it comes in waves at times you feel comfortable that you are you are probably um, gone through the worst. Then there is a period of lull, and then suddenly those things start to happen all over again because now that the virus has seen uh, how to to evade certain things, immunity issues, even vaccine issues, and now it comes back with a vengeance with uh, somewhere else in the in the in the world. But then it slowly cat catches up everywhere. Now, Doctor, just you can talk a little more loudly, please? Oh. I, I'm not able to hear you. Make it closer. Okay. I'm speaking quite loud, but I think probably the mic is a little louder. Um, in, uh, I, I just give you the example of UK. For, uh, the, after a, a, a rise uh, in uh, December, January of 
uh, earlier this year. And uh, uh, there was a lull for several months. All the programs, you know, the, you know, of restrictions and the lockdowns, they just were released. People were walking around there, except in congreg congregations or in malls or in shopping centers. You were not obligated to hear, you wear the mask, but people would prefer to wear the mask in those situations. But now the numbers have shot up. To the, it's a country which is about 18 times smaller than India. Um, but yet the number of daily new cases is uh, something like uh, 1,20,000. So if you translate that in 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 in, in, in Indian Indian context, it would be something like more than 20 lakh, 25 lakh cases, new cases a day. And you remember during Delta times, the peak that India uh, achieved uh, with with COVID uh, influx was four lakh fourteen thousand cases in one day, and uh, you know the havoc it had created. So that is what UK is passing through at the moment. But now the variant is such that it is not causing so much of morbidity and mortality. Again, giving the example of last year when the number there was about 60,000, the number of deaths were about 14,000, 1,400, 1,500 every day. Now the number is double, one lakh 20,000 there, but the mortality is less than 200. So the reasons are that the whole country has been vaccinated. I think 90% of Britons, uh, Brits have had double vaccination in all their adults. Um, then they are also doing a very extensive booster program now. For example, uh, just a few days ago, I mean, they did 8,65,000 uh, booster vaccinations in one day. That was on a Thursday. What I'm saying is, if on an average, a smaller country like that can do eight and a half, uh, lakh, eight lakh and a half of booster doses. That means they are so serious about containing this virus, and they have already seen the effect of double vaccination in mortality. You see, when we are giving these vaccinations, we are not preventing the infection from happening. After all, if somebody is sitting there with with me and is uh, passing the infection to me, and I'm already vaccinated. Nothing is stopping the, the virus to reach me, but the issue is how do I react? How does my body react? How does the vaccination or any past illness that I might have of, with COVID might uh, allow me to react to the, uh, the new virus that is trying to enter my body? So the good thing about the vaccinations have been that it reduces even the incidence of milder disease. It certainly reduces the incidence of severe disease or reduces the severity of the disease and it certainly re reduces the death rate. No question about that. These are studies now, plenty of them, you know, uh, coming through from USA, from UK, Europe and elsewhere. So um, we certainly are, uh, you know, uh, dealing with a virus currently which is very transmissible uh, but at the same time, uh, it's not causing that kind of uh, severe disease and mortality. So um, we have to continue with the precautions that we were taking earlier. Uh, the uh, mask, hand washing and avoiding congregations and uh, give, giving infections to others. Now, these are some, some of the basic things which we have learned and but we have tried to, we try to re-emphasize on those things in the TV interviews and everywhere else, you know, over and over again, so that it, people don't lose sight of the fact, but they still do. Look at the people in the public areas, in the markets, in the malls. I mean, do you see uh, in, in open markets, uh, maybe probably only 10, 20 percent people actually wearing the mask or actually avoiding a, a, a distance closer than two meters. It's not happening. So that is what proliferates this virus. This virus cannot go anywhere uh, on its own. It has to go through human contact only. So uh, we have also announced that the precautionary dose, the third dose will be given uh, shortly. So 
why is there a need for a precautionary dose i mean uh, apart from the two doses of vaccination i mean i know that countries like the uk are doing uh, the third booster dose uh, quite extensively uh, so why is there a need for this third dose you think there are quite a few trials now several trials which have shown that the immunity after the first and the second vaccination gradually comes down now how much time it takes for the immunity to go down or the antibody levels to go down it varies from place to place from country to country from in different individuals depending on your age and a lot of other things for example in older individuals it would come down faster so if let's say on an average you would say that the immunity would last 6 to 8 months that is the rough estimation in the studies that have have come through so far although you require much longer follow up period to be very sure about this aspect but roughly it is presumed that 6 to 8 months probably even longer would be the answer uh, but it varies so much uh, now if the last wave that or the last vaccination in india now i'm giving the example of india was done uh, in the summer in fact it started in uh, january uh, something like 13th of january i think so then people the healthcare workers and the frontline workers were vaccinated let's say in the month of january and the second dose in february or march we already have 9 months now to that so we all probably are already vulnerable yes but if we have had a covid disease also in the meantime a lots of us had then we probably would have more augmented antibodies because we took subsequently uh, uh, the 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 vaccinations also so probably we we are still a bit protected but we are not sure about that so first of all you, we are not sure how much the t lymphocyte response would persist in the body what we look at is only the antibody level which may come down but still on it may come down on paper but in vivo in the body the t lymphocytes may still be protected and you certainly do not lose control of your um, uh, you know your uh, immunity so what i'm saying here is uh, now we in india people are after having vaccinated in got vaccinated in summer they will be reaching a stage that in the first quarter of 20 uh, 2022 that they will start to become vulnerable again all right if they have not yet done now the test uh, the the study so far done on for example mrna vaccines like pfizer like moderna after having received um, the vaccine by astrazeneca there's a big study which is more respected in the uk where they gave the booster with pfizer and then they studied the effect it was found that it certainly improved the the response uh, in in augmenting the an- antibodies and thereby presuming that the efficacy would be much better after the third shot so even those the uh, 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 countries where two uh, pfizer doses were given the third booster by pfizer again augmented the antibodies um, which had dropped to some like 35% back to 75% in case of omicron because the worry was that omicron is is evading the immunity by previous disease or by vaccinations so that is true so the vaccinations are not as effective as they were against the original wuhan virus or the delta virus and other variants but uh, certainly uh, giving a third dose so far in all the trials have shown that the the response is much better and the risk for falling in, into a severe disease or death is significantly reduced that is why we we are looking at the the uh, booster dose or whatever you may call it the, what the indian government has decided to call it uh so in india to we we are calling it the precautionary dose and is about to start so I, by the way i i don't know why it is called precautionary dose it is just a question mark because scientists are not sure what would why would it be called precautionary dose maybe because I, there is yeah. maybe because uh that 
the actual effect of boosting the antibodies was seen when mRNA vaccine was given over, let's say, AstraZeneca or adenovirus-based uh, vaccination. So, and we do not have Pfizer here in, in our country. We, in fact, hardly have much Moderna also. So, keeping that in view, it is possible that they decided to call it, um, uh, not call it a booster, because we are not sure about boosting, because we may be giving uh, the third dose also of Covishield or Covaxin, or there are a couple of new um, uh, vaccines that have been approved yesterday. You, you would be knowing that. Uh, Corbevax and um, uh, Covovax. So one is indigenously Indian, the other one is by the Serum Institute of India. So they probably would be used as the boosters. But, but since we do not have the trials proving that the, it will cause a boost effect, so that is why the term has been uh, uh, used oh, differently. Yeah. So the recommended time to get this third dose is uh, nine months? Or yeah, what that time? is the official line. And I think it is quite right because uh, so far um, all over the world, even in the UK, they have just taken about nine months as the approximate time. Though by the time people would actually be covered, some of them might be uh, more than a year actually by the time their turn comes. So, but certainly nine months is a, is a very sensible decision to, to take. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, got a certain uh, group of people who are now eligible for the precautionary dose in India. So who are these uh, groups? Could you enlighten us? Oh, well, uh, anybody who is above 60 years is eligible because uh, we, I, I just talked about the antibody level going down faster in them. And they are, in any case, more prone to develop infection, not only infection, but more severe disease and the risk of death. And those people who have comorbidities, for example, who have uh, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, lung diseases, whether it's a structural lung disease like interstitial lung, lung disease, COPD, asthma, or old uh, massive tuberculosis damage, or it is a cardiovascular uh, disease where the patient is a coronary artery disease, has had a cardiomyopathy, myocarditis. Uh, so these, and if there are people with transplant, immune compromised for any reason, or having malignancy proven, whether they are taking any, any chemotherapy or not, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, they would further uh, reduce the immunity. So all these, uh, people who are a very vulnerable group would be uh, uh, the first ones to be, be, be offered the booster shot. Can you hear me, Lindy? Yes, yes. Sorry. All right. So they would be the first one to get the booster. And also the healthcare workers and the frontline workers, uh, you know, outside the, 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 the hospitals, they would also be the initial ones to be given the benefit of the booster. Uh, so we now think that the same vaccine uh, which was given as the first and second dose will be offered as the uh, third dose, isn't it, doctor? Yeah, this it looks like in India because we, we do not have uh, the mRNA vaccines. Uh, so it is possible that you can switch from if you have taken two shots of uh, Covishield. And, and as you know, 90% of in, uh, Indians have received Covishield, not Covaxin or Sputnik. Very few Sputnik and the rest are co-vaccine, but 90% are Covishield. So you could take a booster uh, or a, a, a the precautionary shot with co-vaccine. And if you have had co-vaccine earlier, you can have it with Covishield. That would be a preferred choice. But of course, I don't know. Uh, I think the government guidelines are, I think, uh, a little different. Yeah, it will depend on the availability. It will also depend on the availability. We have to see what emerges, I think. Yeah. Yes. And... Uh, we uh, the next thing is about uh, other vulnerable groups so one such uh, being uh, pregnant women and nursing mothers yeah. so would you advise that they should also if it has been nine months after their this second was dose, a question this was a hot question last year when yes. uh, the vaccines became available earlier yeah. this year rather and uh, you know a lot of people would ask me about whether you know they should be vaccinated or not in fact they have a higher reason an extra reason to be vaccinated and they shouldn't fear vaccine vaccination 
because the risk of disease during pregnancy even early pregnancy or immediately after pregnancy is higher for causing a more severe disease and risk of death is higher in this group so they should be adequately protected and same goes for the precautionary dose third dose that they should receive uh, without question uh, considering that we and now same, have sorry, same goes for the lactating mothers too sorry. yes uh, so the next thing is about the Omicron variant itself. So what what is the latest about it? Is it uh, we know that it is slowly creeping up in India, and we know yeah. that in UK also, and many even in the US, it is now becoming the variant which is dominant Absolutely. over the Delta. Yeah. So yeah. there is a view that uh, you know there are people. I mean, for example, there was a WhatsApp forward that I received from a doctor yesterday saying that you know this is the best news because you know this will confer immunity and it will be very mild it might just be like a common cold so how valid is this uh, kind of observation okay. Ron, and how it in I'll India I'll answer this thing first yes. I'll answer your last part of your question first then come down come to the Omicron uh, origins about three to four weeks ago three weeks probably three weeks over three weeks ago in a TV interview I raised this point that and also on Apollo uh, uh, this um, Facebook page also. I in the interview I said that don't be surprised this is, if Omicron turns out to be blessing in disguise by giving you an immunity, an autoimmunity without getting a jab because you are dealing with a virus which would just come and probably give you a little slap and go away. All right, like a common cold or a flu. It will not take you to the hospital. Uh, it, and it will be spreading so fast that you, by the time you realize you have symptoms, you have already given symptoms to or passed the uh, infection to the family members. So it will probably happen very rapidly, but all of them probably would like to be treated at home with a little bit of uh, symptomatic treatment. And vast majority of them would not be admitted to the hospital and very few would ever enter the ICU. So that way, it might be turn, turning out to be a blessing in disguise by kind of causing immunized, sort of immunization by disease all over the world, globally, even in those countries who do not have vaccination or, or in Af the African continent, for example, or who do not have the means to have the vaccination. And because of the inequity of uh, vaccine distribution globally, so they will be the beneficiaries that way. So uh, this is certainly, uh, I agree with that. And which you uh, read in a day. I certainly hope that yeah. this turns out yeah. to be because now coming be. coming to the uh, Omicron, the you see, it was in South Africa that the disease started, and people were watching it carefully, and all the statements from there, all the little studies, little data, the studies would take time to publish, you know, but little early anecdotal data that was coming through did certainly after the first couple of very anxious weeks gradually people settled down to understand that this is a, a virus, a variant, which is going to cause very milder disease with the body aches, little bit of fever, little bit of cough, headache, and weakness and tiredness. So the, and th those who would progress to hypoxia, low oxygen, or uh, uh, any cardiovascular, myocarditis-like uh, changes or uh, complications, would be very, very few. So few that they are not even being talked about. So, so far, so good. And um, if I recall the data, out of 1,400, uh, uh, 1,400, uh, 14, yeah, 1,400, I think, cases, there was only one death uh, in UK. Uh, in Now, coming to the dominance of the strain, it is a dominant strain in UK and in USA also, majority. And uh, uh, of course, in, uh, in I would say in South Africa it is a dominant strain, and in UK it is a it is a majority strain, and in USA also it is going up very fast. It is replacing Delta, and in India, so far the numbers are much fewer. But looking at the last few days, the jump in uh, those cases has been manifold. 
like um, about two weeks ago, um, on 13th or 14th of uh, this month, the number of cases in Delhi was around 35 mm -hmm. to 50. 35 to 50. Today it has crossed 500. Sure. So in two weeks time. So that is what we presume. We thought this would happen. But at the same time, and we, let's not keep uh, forget the fact that these are the patients who actually approach the agencies for testing. They, in Omicron, majority would not even approach the hospitals or test facilities for RT-PCR test because the symptoms would be just too mild. And we are into a phase where the flu is still uh, quite dominant in North India Thank so you because well. of the winter. Yeah, so they would just think it's it's a passing flu. So they would not be, and people generally, you know, are not too willing to go for RT-PCR test on their own unless they are really scared Thank or you. the symptoms are significant. So we probably would be missing thousands of them. If we have picked 500, we have probably missed, missed 5,000 of them. Possibly. We just have to keep hoping that it continues to be so mild that, yeah. you know, it is kind of passes people, but also gives them that good immunity. Yeah, but there, is only, there is only one caveat that yes. a new strain, which would be more virulent, does not come through. So, and, uh, and if it has to come, then it comes only after the majority of the world has been given the, you know, immunity by uh, Omicron. So let's hope that. Let's just hope. So thank you so much, Dr. Kanwar. And I do hope that your insights would have helped our viewers to understand the role of the precautionary dose in protecting us from COVID, including from the Omicron variant. So viewers, do register if you're eligible and take your precautionary dose as well. And I do hope that you have completed your two doses of vaccine. If not, please do so. And you know the rest of it. The tools for COVID protection are all in your hands. That is the safe masking, the hand hygiene, the social distancing, and avoiding the crowds. So you know it. So do it. Be safe, be well, and be alert. Do subscribe to our social media channels or YouTube channel, and also put in any of your comments and queries on our social media pages or on our website. We're always there to assist you. Thank you and namaste. Namaste.